Welcome to the Press for Conversation Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey. Today we got a boxing phenom, man, a boxing prospect, man, coming up in the ranking, man, from Detroit, Michigan. He's one and over one knockout. Man, he made his, we're gonna talk about his pro debut in his next fight. My man, Gordy Russ, what's up, man? What's up, Corey? I like that. I like that. Yeah, like what's that. going on? So what's going on, man? Nothing chilling, you know, getting ready for the next fight. Weigh ins tomorrow. Um just ready to, you know, put on a great show. So I seen you turn pro April the tenth in in Atlanta, Georgia. How was it for you then? April tenth. I'm I'm gonna go down the whole thing. Look, I was nervous, but I had like the little the first time jitterbugs. Oh yeah. Had to get them out the first round. Second round, I was like, all right, I'm still kind of jittery a little right. bit. Third round, it just came to me like, man, you you supposed to be here type thing. Um, LJ told me in my corner what I was supposed to do. Came back out, stopped on third round. Mm, so, how was your very first boxing fight, amateur overall? How was your very first fight? Uh, I won my first amateur fight. I won. I was at um, it was the Golden Gloves. I think 2016, 2015. And I was like 13, 14. This is when my mama started letting me compete, like compete for real, like open and all that stuff. Like I can actually keep a record. Mm-hmm. But um, my cousin, you know, Sugar Hill, is Jay, and he was running a oh, yeah. crunk. Mm-hmm. So we, um, they say, oh, yeah, y'all fighting that crunk. You know, be there, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And be there. So I'm like, all right, bet. I'm there, you know. Tony in my corner, he working the corner. Coach Ali was in my corner, he working the corner. So I'm like, all right, let's put on the show. And I was kind of nervous then, cause I was like fighting in front of my family and stuff like that. So I was like, oh man, I gotta, ma- I gotta make sure I win. Like if I fight in front of my family and I lose, oh that's that that's gonna be heartbreaking. Yeah, so I'm like, when I first seen you fight, I was like, whoa. Man, so tell us, what made you choose boxing? Boxing? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the real story. What made me choose boxing, Mm -hmm. I was getting in trouble all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, as a little kid, you would never want to watch me. I was fighting all the time. Uh, Every time I went to school, I was getting suspended. But I started when I was younger, like at like 10, 9 years old. And I was going to Crunk. I originally started at Crunk. I was working with uh, Javen Sugar Hill. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's my cousin. Emmanuel was my uncle and stuff like that. Oh, yeah? So I was over there working with them. And, like, I would lose. And I'd be like, once I lose, I can't do it no more. But, so I'd take a break and off, break on and off, on and off. And then when I got, like, to high school, I was like, man, let me start competing at it. And then once I got to competing at it, I started, like, messing up in high school and then, like, was getting kicked out of school and stuff, put in different schools. Mm -hmm. And my first real, like, passion was really, like, football. I was good in football. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, since I couldn't be in a certain school, uh, like, I was going to Cass Tech. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, the next guy up, I was supposed to be next for real, but I was messing up with my grades, messing up in school. I had to transfer, mm. couldn't even do it. So I was like, man, I let me fall back on my hands. So you've been with you've been with Super Bad Academy your whole boxing career. Yeah, but you've been with them since day one, day one. Yeah, day one, day one. I gotta ask you this question, and I know this is probably a tough question. How was it when you found the news that the great Coach Ali had passed away? Uh, that that night I was I was hurt. I was really hurt. Like I, I like literally sat on the edge of my bed. Like that's like I ain't never think I could ever like cry over mm-hmm. anybody for real. But like the way how Coach Ali was to me, it just it it hurt it's, me, man. It, it's hard, man, because I mean he was one of a kind, man. This man never said anything bad about anybody bad about nobody I mean, he he bite his tongue ever since i've been not even that he just 
this he just positive vibe. Every, yeah. every time I talked to him, it was always smooth. Every time, and no matter what the situation it was, he was always calm. Like I went to him for it. a lot of advice, man. And it was the same advice. Man, just stand there, man. Just stand there. If Stick I had, with it. If I had your arm, I cut, I cut mine oh, off. Man, man, he was great. And I also see that in LJ and Tony, but I see a lot because I see LJ more than Tony. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I see it a lot in LJ. LJ the same way. Um, he he more with the kids. Like he loved the kids a lot. Like especially his basketball babies. Like he will. You know, go to the moon and back for them, mm-hmm. especially as the boxers too. Mm-hmm. But any kid in there that that come to our gym at Super Bad Academy is like, once you come in, you one of us now. You get what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, everybody would go. So I gotta ask you this question. Let's talk about teammates. Let's talk about Lance Smith. Lance Smith, he did excellent Books. in the Golden Glove. My boy, Jamarco Holloway, and the phenomenal and the phenomenal. This woman, I'm telling you, she, she bad boy. She just won. Let's talk about the one and only Bomb Garner, man. Bomb Bomb Garner. <laughs> it's so, Bomb Bomb Garner. So how did it feel training with with your team, man? Like you know, y'all go everywhere. You know, it's like a chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. How, how you feel having that bond with them? Oh uh, man, I'm gonna start with Bomb Bomb Gardner first. All right. <laughs> Bomb Bomb Gardner really like my health nut. And everything like she keep my nutrition. Uh, she helped me right, like as in uh, make sure I eat the right stuff. But she also my sister at the same time. Like I can call her and just be like, "Shoot, what you doing, man? Like, where you at? Mm. See him, just checking up on her." Mm. Jamarco, that's just like another me. Like I look at Marco and I be like, "Oh man, we is so oh, much alike." Oh. <laughs> No, no, we just like a like, like, like Marco would be like, man, I was just thinking that and when I had just said it, like I'd probably say something. He'd be like, man, I was literally just thinking that. And I'd be like, man, that's young crazy. Like we probably just, I don't know. But so, so what you be doing outside the boxing gym when you ain't training and everything? Oh, what you be doing, man? What's your? Are you very family oriented? I see you hang with your uncle. Like, is you very family oriented? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love my family. Thick and thin, you know, but most of the time I'm at home playing Warzone, playing the game, PS5. Uh, I'm eating food. I I'm, I'm like a big food eater. Do you already know? You seen that on my uh, Instagram? Oh I'm, man, you, this dude, man, tips, everything. Man, I I can't wait. You talking about Super Bad Academy, Soul Food Academy? Man, he was on there, boy. So man, tell us what's, what's your favorite type of gloves you like to wear when you sparring and, and in fights. What's your favorite type? Of gloves? I know you just turned pro, but what's your favorite type of gloves you like to wear? Is it Grant? Is it Everlast? Is it Title? I or like. It don't matter. I like. I like. I like Grant, but it really don't matter to me. My hands gonna flow regardless. regardless. They gonna go regardless. Right, because you got some boxing gloves that feel better. Some feel better. Yeah, than some others. feel better than others, and some you know you can. Close your fists in them, some you really can't really close it all the way. But Grants, I really like Grants a lot. Okay. How did you feel about the Pacquiao fight this weekend? Do you feel like it was supposed to happen the way it did? Did you feel like Pacquiao didn't prepare for him properly because he had Earl? Or do you think Pacquiao should have still did better or you just think it's time to hang it up? Pacquiao, I'ma say this. Ugas ain't no bum. He ain't he ain't no slouch and no nothing like that. Mm-hmm. You got to give Ugas his you know his props and everything. Mm-hmm. But Pacquiao, I feel like he wasn't prepared. Mm-hmm. Even though you you spar a lot of um, orthodox fighters and stuff because you know it's mm-hmm. more orthodox than southpaws. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't prepared to go against him. He wasn't planning out to go against him. He was planning to go against another southpaw. So when it came and everything, you know, the whole dilemma, and it, it was a switch up. It's a change up now. Mm-hmm. Now you gotta fight a south, a, a, a orthodox. Mm-hmm. That's just like me. I fight a lot of orthodox fighters in the gym, but when it come, oh man, you gotta fight a southpaw. Oh dang, you know, you know, orthodox fighters hate southpaws. Yeah. Anybody, we yeah. all hate the the opposite yeah, stance. Yeah, because they, the, the head butts. Yeah, like, I mean, the head butts. The the. The tapping of the toe, the foot, yeah. you know, you could trip, 
easy. It just, it just, it's just, it's a, it's a whole. So now that you're in the pro game, you just got in. If you had the opportunity to fight somebody right now, who would it be and why? Fight anybody? Yeah. Uh, who would I fight right now? Wait a minute, did now? you just say Alicia? Did you just say that? <laughs> Alicia, Alicia, I don't even. Uh, it's like no, I'm just playing. But I would fight. I fight Charlo. Which, I, which I, one? Um, smaller one. So was it? It's Jamel. Yeah, I see I that one. Jamel. I, yeah, that's Jamel. I, I noticed you. You, uh, you know, you, we we yeah. always got that one going yeah, on. Yeah, you, you had a comment on it like he's, you know, he's a fat. It's something you said about. Yeah, him. he a bum and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. I just want my, you know, I just want my people's get backs. You know, I'm I'm ride or die for Tony all day. So if, if anybody who go against him, argue with him, anything, I'm dang there the first one. Like, come on, right? right. I go against ain't, him. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. You supposed to be like that, man. So tell us about this fight, man. Tell about the fight you got this weekend, man. August twenty seventh, man. Yeah. Tell uh, about this fight, man. In, in Dearborn, man. Man, I'm just ready to fight. Stop this guy, and keep it pushing, man. Keep it rolling. I'm, I'm looking for, you know, more. Uh, how can I say it? Like, I'm just want to build my resume the right way. You feel me? Get myself up to the top. So, what are you planning on fighting at, at junior middleweight? Yeah. 154 uh, or 160? 154. 154. What's the lowest weight you ever got in, down in boxing? Uh, 150. Just I started at one. I started at 52. So. Oh, okay, okay. What? So that's more comfortable? Yeah, it's comfortable. I know you went up to, and the amateurs went up to what, 78? Yeah, to because play. I just didn't want to. I didn't. I went up to 78 because I didn't want to put in the extra work of losing the weight. So, like, I would be walking around probably like, 78 I mean no not 78 68 but you know the the amateurs it was 165 mm -hmm. i'd be like Psh, forget it i know i can beat these 78ers mm -hmm. they ain't they ain't nothing they just really slow and i just i'm faster than them, more athletic than them and just beat i was beating them mm. so who was the favorite who was the most favorite person you like to spar get to get you ready for fights oh it got to be tony Tony. It gotta be Tony. Tony just like push push that edge out of me. Tony is a great chess player. Oh in, yeah, and outside the ring, you gotta think with him. You can't just go in there any and anything. You got. See, that's why he was able to beat Charlo the first time. Second time he could have beat him too, but you know he just got caught. But I think the stoppage could have went. It was was yeah, but it's controversial. But, yeah, you know, but the first fight he made, he's playing chess with Charlo, mm -hmm. and. That made it a, a, a more tough fight because they thought they was just gonna go in there probably and walk him down. Yeah, but see, Tony, you gotta play chess with him because he he know how to move and, and he got a jab, man. And, and it's I'm telling you, it's Tony all the way. Like Tony keeps me like grounded, like to make sure I don't get the big head. Right. Don't right. overdo he didn't have it. it. He don't have it. Yeah, he he keep me really grounded for real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's only right though because they're humble. I mean, I mean, this brother LJ, I, I, he's so cool, man. I like them, man. I, I like all y'all over there. Like I said, when I, I barely come around, but when I do come over there, I watch y'all train and mm -hmm. this and that, and you know, I see y'all go for tiff attack. I don't really come over there when y'all spark, cause it, by the time I get over there, it'd be so quiet over there. Everybody yeah. going like when I came on it last time, but yeah, I had to. I had to buy a ticket to your fight because I'm, I get a chance to see you fight in in person. I can see you finally put pause on somebody. No pause, no homo. But I get a chance to see you beat somebody up in person. You know what I'm saying? At, and that's good that you you fighting right here. It ain't hard. I ain't got to go way across the country yeah. and stuff like that. But I, I would, though. For like, It's a couple of fighters I would. You know, I like to, yeah, I like stretch to see your hand. Right, for them right. Because time. Detroit boxing, man, it's, it's missing a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to see a lot of tournaments come here and a lot yeah, of that's, shows. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing, I man. I wonder why, why the Al Heymans don't come here, why the 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 top ranks don't come here. And, this, and Detroit is a big market city. And the thing, that the crazy thing is we got to get this amateur program back rolling how yeah. it used to be. And I would say um, back in the day, they, they was throwing fights anywhere. They was just, yeah. they was like, shoot, we're going to throw a fight here, throw a fight there. Yeah. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, they was making money. I remember when I remember when Tony fought Brocco McCarty right there at Cobo yeah, Hall. Yeah. Right there at the Cobo Hall. I never forget. I had when Deontay Wilder was down here. It was uh -huh. 
I was able to take for pictures with him, but they, they used to fight at Clover Hall. I think that's what Tommy Hearns and uh, they saw Marvin Hagler there, I think, back in the day. It just, boxing is just, it, it just need to get back popping in each other. Yeah. It just really does, man. Everybody just needs to, just nowadays, you go in the gym, you be like, it's so empty, but when y'all go to y'all gym, man, it be packed, it be people working yeah, out. Yeah, we, we working. Y'all, y'all, man, y'all crazy, man, over there. I ain't made no offense, man. Especially with that heat. Y'all be yelling that for me. I'm like, look, man, I'm about to quit. I'm about to get up out of here, man. <laughs> I'm just, I ain't even working. I'm just sitting here sweating, man. But y'all just, but just keep grinding, man. Keep putting the work, man. And this Friday, man, I feel, man, you know what? It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. He knew. Oh man, that dude in trouble, man. He I'm, is. I'm glad it ain't me. I'm, I'm glad to I can be sit happy, out man. I'm glad I can sit out drinking and watch. And That's just watch. Beauty Eat of your popcorn, man. Yeah, you, I don't, I don't even know if you're guys. gonna be. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to get popcorn. Don't get up. Don't even try to go. Man, go to the concessions. Man, I when I when I come out, it's gonna be sweet, man. Hey, nice and short. I know one thing. I ain't sitting way in the back. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm moving up front. I'm kidding. Well, you got thirty-dollar ticket. Well, hey, make it easy. I'm moving right up front. Don't you tell me that. I'm moving right up front, and I'm gonna sit right there, and I'm gonna watch some fights go down. So, okay. for, but for the people out there that's watching this press for conversation podcast show, how can we get in touch with Gordy Rush? Uh, you can contact me, or you know, go follow me on uh, social media. My Instagram is Gore D G O R D I I three E's at the end. Okay. And then also my Twitter is underscore 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 Gordo. All right, y'all. There y'all have it, man. Make sure y'all check them out. August twenty seventh. What's that? At the Dib for at the what's it called? For for the uh, Performance Arts Center. For Performance Arts Center, Dibboy, Michigan, man. Be there, be square, man. This is a press for conversation podcast, y'all. Peace. Public service announcement.